Here with Michael McRobbie. Uh, Michael, take us through the process here. It was interesting in talking to Kevin. He said this was a job that really has only been on his radar for a month or so. How did he become identified as a candidate? Well, we started the um, search process uh, earlier in the year, and we first sought uh, input from a whole range of different constituencies within the within the Big Ten uh, schools, but, but elsewhere as well, um, about the criteria uh, for the type of person we wanted, the details of the job description. And uh, we spent quite a bit of time putting that together because we really wanted to use this as an opportunity after 30 years of, of a long-serving and immensely successful commissioner of thinking through what do we want and what do we expect of a new commissioner. So we did that. Um, and then um, as that process uh, was developing, we uh, sought um, nominations and we also um, uh, engaged a search uh, firm, who was, which was called Ferry, to work with us uh, to identify people that we might in turn approach as well. So overall there were about uh, in excess of 60 people that we considered uh, and uh, looked at and looked at their qualifications and then we just proceeded to uh, work through uh, those people. I, I don't want to go into the details of exactly how all that went, but um, but ultimately it resulted in Kevin meeting with the uh, the, the board of the council of presidents and, and chancellors, and uh, uh, soon afterwards uh, we made the um, unanimous unanimous decision, as I said uh, at the news conference, to. Um, offer the position to Kevin. And that's really how it worked. It came out in the reporting uh, in the hours since Kevin's name kind of surfaced as the person who was going to get the job that he had a role in the selection of Mark Coyle, that he was on the search committee at the University of Minnesota working with Eric Kaler on that. How important was input from Eric in terms of identifying Kevin as a candidate? Well, obviously Eric uh, knew him, but uh, um, and that was uh, useful in, in originally identifying Kevin, but Kevin was somebody who, um, let us say there were multiple people who spoke to Kevin's virtues and as somebody who we should be um, con considering. Too. What stood out to you about him when you met him? Um, he, he's, he's very articulate, very passionate. Um, he sort of wears his heart on his sleeve. You know, you know where you stand with Kevin on, on some of these issues. Uh, but I think uh, the fact that he has been successful in such a complex, difficult landscape, and to have taken uh, t taken the Vikings from from what was uh, when he took over, um, I think, and by most uh, criteria, um, a very lowly position to the position where they are today. Uh, as the COO responsible for the uh, all the comprehensive business side of the of the operation, I mean, really kind of spoke for itself. And, and in such a uh, such a competitive environment, uh, with the level of scrutiny, because the scrutiny in the Big Ten is pretty high too. I've noticed but the level, of <laughs> <laughs> but the level of scrutiny in the in the uh, NFL is pretty amazing as well. Uh, and and to have um, done as well as he has done uh, there. Um, and, and then to, on the one hand, understand uh, the, the, the importance of, of football and basketball, they are the two high profile sports, but at the same time to, to also, uh, I think, deeply understand the importance of all the other sports um, and the importance of the Olympic sports in particular in as much as it um, impacts Title IX and all our women athletes in the, in the university. So, it was really, as one goes through all those different issues, uh, I, I think Kevin showed um, great understanding of them. And, and part of it reflected the fact that he himself, of course, was uh, a, a college athlete of considerable standing. And uh, as he constantly refers to, uh, in, his, in his comments, he has a son and a daughter who uh, son is now and his daughter was a, a college athlete as well. So, so he saw it face to face at, at home and uh, that, that's I think a significant uh, factor as well. To what extent did the fact that he had not been in an administrative role in college athletics impact your thinking? Um, well, I, I think um, uh, it, it was the fact that he had been in uh, an administrative role uh, that um, in in athletics in, in a very high profile complex environment I mean that was the the, the definitive uh, criteria for us um, I think he he certainly 
uh, understands and has had um, a lot of knowledge. Certainly, the, the people who've mentored him and that he'd worked with, the fact that he had had the, the experience with, with Slive and Co in the past, uh, dealing with uh, the NCAA investigations and fractions and so on, certainly gave him a grounding in, in, in the area. And of course, remember that in the transition period that we're about to see, he will overlap with Jim Delaney for uh, nearly four months. And uh, so he will, um, he will actually uh, learn from the great master of these, uh, <laughs> of these different areas. Sure. <laughs> uh, what do you think are the biggest challenges that are facing the Big Ten? What were kind of the factors that you guys considered as to, hey, these are the waters that this person, whoever it is, is going to need to navigate? Yeah, I think, I think the future of amateurism and the, the future of uh, the student athlete, I mean, you know what the issues are there as well, uh, uh, navigating our way through that in, in a way that is, um, uh, fair and reasonable to to all who are involved. That's probably a major consideration, a major uh, issue that uh, that will that will confront him, and obviously is confronting all of us in the in the Big Ten. And then secondly, uh, uh, the media uh, world, the media landscape. I mean, you know uh, better than I do uh, that uh, to. To what were certitudes a year ago and no longer certitudes when it comes to to the media um, and uh, the changes are, are happening rapidly unexpectedly new players are emerging old players are disappearing and so on navigating our way through that so that the the the, the business side of the of the big 10 remains successful because that is so important to the support that the big 10 provides for intercollegiate athletics at uh, all our institutions Michael McRobbie, thank you so much for your delighted. time and congratulations thank you very on much. what appears to be an inspired selection. We, we're delighted. We're uh, delighted. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.